In all the commercial hype surrounding Christmas, do we forget the most profound and important things of all? Let's look at some of the most important things that a human being can do at Christmas. Things we don't want to neglect. We'll look at Luke 3, 7 through 18, and see what profound changes John expected with repentance. When the crowds came to John for baptism, he said, You brood of snakes, who warned you to flee God's coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you've repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we're descendants of Abraham. That means nothing, for I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Even now the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. The crowds asked, what should we do? John replied, if you have two shirts, give one to the poor. If you have food, share it with those who are hungry. Even corrupt tax collectors came to be baptized and asked, Teacher, what should we do? He replied, Collect no more taxes than the government requires. What should we do? asked some soldiers. John replied, Don't extort money or make false accusations, and be content with your pay. Everyone was expecting the Messiah to come soon and they were eager to know whether John might be the Messiah. John answered their questions by saying, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandals. He'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He's ready to separate the chaff from the wheat with his winnowing fork. Then he'll clean up the threshing floor, gathering the wheat into his barn, but burning the chaff with never-ending fire. John used many such warnings as he announced the good news to the people. In Isaiah 1 verses 10 through 17, God chastised Israel for performing religious duties while having their hands covered with the blood of innocent victims. Stand up, sit down, genuflect, raise your hands, crush yourselves, put up Christmas lights, exchange gifts, sing Amen, shout hallelujahs, praise the Lord, speak in tongues, bow your heads, and swing that incense censer. None of these things is evil. They're all good if they come from God and are used for good. But John the Baptist called some religious people the children of snakes. Was it an allusion to the devil? Was he saying that without repentance, all or any religious dedication is worthless? Is he saying to us that genuine religion is evidenced by seeking justice and helping the oppressed, as James wrote? Nationalism is not new. It creates in us an air of superiority. The British Empire was the kingdom of God on earth, and the royals were defenders of the faith. Then we learned the truth about British atrocities in many countries. America used the polite term regime change when overthrowing popularly elected governments to set up puppet dictatorships, while we believed it was making the world safe for democracy. Nationalism blinds any people to their country's sins. John the Baptist preached that his fellow citizens believed they were all right with God because faithful Abraham was their ancestor. They were blind to widespread national tax corruption, extortion, and injustice in treating the poor and hungry. From government and industry leaders to ourselves, our whole nation needs to repent. Repentance is primarily a change of heart, confirmed by fruits, good works. John the Baptist addressed the need to change our hearts and our deeds. We see John's concerns even today, exploitation of taxes for personal gain, and misuse of military might to enrich ourselves. Baptism is confirmed in a decision to repent. Baptism by fire is threefold. A baptism of fire occurred as flames of fire resting upon people's heads on that first Pentecost. A baptism by fiery trials and judgment to come in which the chaff will be burned with unending fire. 
Hellfire and brimstone preaching can easily be overdone or ignored completely. Yet Jesus does preach about final judgment in fire. He also appeals to us to repent so that we don't have to face it. Winnowing is the process of separating a grain from its hulls, or chaff, using moving air. Chaff is indigestible to humans, but cattle can eat it as fodder. It can also be plowed into the ground or burned. Response to John the Baptist's preaching was like winnowing. Now is the day to respond to today's message and repent. Jesus will judge, then burn up the chaff and preserve the wheat based on familiar criteria. How do we treat the hungry and thirsty? How is our hospitality to strangers or foreigners? How is our giving to those who need clothing? What is our treatment of those who need health care? How do we treat imprisoned criminals? Where will we be on the judgment day, among the wheat or chaff? Don't get lost in the commercial glitz and forget what's really important. Let's remember the profound transformation that Christmas has brought to us. 